Hello and welcome to the Life Lives channel. On this episode, we're gonna make this wonderful Iranian style risotto. It is called dampok in Persian, which means uh, easy cook. So it's very easy to cook, and uh, I'm gonna show you every single step in details on how to achieve perfect results, even for the first timers. So to start, we need uh, some rice. Uh, it's better to use the basmati rice or the long grain rice for this type of risotto. Um, what you need to do, you need to first wash it a couple of times. Uh, as you can see, it gets kind of cloudy because of all the dust during the process of uh, making rice in the company. So we try to get as much of dust as we can by washing it a couple of times with the uh, warmth water. Uh, you don't need to get rid of everything and make it perfectly clear. As long as you can still see the rice afterwards while there is some water on top of it, that should do the job. Um, yeah, so if you want to if you want to count it per person, it should be roughly about one cup of rice. But as the amount of uh, uh, people that are going to use or consume this food going to grow, doesn't necessarily mean that you need to uh, go ahead and count the amount of people and add the same amount of cups of rice. Uh, more or less, you can just check it with the eye. Uh, this is gonna be good enough for two to three people uh, because we're gonna add some more ingredients as well. So all you need to do is just add it to a bowl, wash it three, four times, uh, get rid of the water, and when it gets to this uh, stage, just add some uh, warm to hot water and uh, let it rest on the side. The type of rice is gonna be basmati or long grain rice. It's not gonna work with jasmine rice or any other uh, semi-processed rice that you can find in nice packaging in the in the shops just go with the basic ones anything that is just white and not processed that is going to work out best for you uh, the ones that are partially steamed or partially cooked and that sort of thing that you find in a freezer that's not what you want to go for this is just going to be on the dry shelves next to probably pastas and all that sort of thing so as long as it says basmati or long grain, you should be good to go. So here are all the other ingredients apart from the rice that we're going to use for the, this risotto. Here I chopped, as you could see, a couple of potatoes. Any potato could do the job for this one based on your taste. You could even use sweet potatoes, although I don't recommend it as it totally changes the taste. But you are the creator of this food, you are the artist, so go ahead and do whatever you think is the best for you. We got onions. I like to use a little bit more onions. You could probably get away for that amount of rice with one uh, medium sized onion as well. I like onions, so I chopped a couple of big ones. And then obviously we got tomatoes. Uh, it depends on the type of tomato that you're gonna use. Some of them are gonna give you a better taste, better look, better color, uh, because there is not many ingredients that you're gonna use with this food. So the tomato is a very crucial part of the final taste and final look of your food. Uh, I'm not gonna use tomatoes because with this type, it's gonna take a lot of tomatoes and it's just gonna end up tasting like tomatoes or it's just gonna taste really good without any colors so i'm not gonna use tomatoes instead you could use tomato puree simple you can get it from any supermarket i know that it is widely available anywhere in the world uh, yeah you just add a couple of uh, tablespoons of this one for that amount of rice which was one and a half uh, cups so you'd be good with only this one you could use chopped tomatoes as well uh, you could use a big can of chopped tomatoes but you need to consume the whole can but with this one as the consistency is like really rich with this one uh, just a couple of tablespoons will do fine for you here are all the spices that we're going to be using in the food today i know at the first glance it looks like a lot of spices and you probably don't know half of them i didn't know half of them when i started like cooking but uh, you don't need to worry and you don't need to have all of them it's just going to give you different taste based on the type of spices that you're going to pick 
The first one is the coriander seeds. Uh, it's a powder, so basically it's crushed, it's been milled. Uh, it's coriander seeds, it's just gonna give you a good aroma. This one is the green cumin. There again, it's been milled, it's crushed. And uh, it's gonna add up to the taste, uh, a little bit of aroma as well. This one, uh, well known, is turmeric. You can find it anywhere. Uh, this one is the uh, garlic powder and obviously salt. You can add, uh, based on your taste, uh, black pepper, white pepper, paprika, whatever you want it. I mean, you don't necessarily need to have everything as long as you got the salt and probably turmeric as well because these two are like the main ones that are gonna uh, be the base of your sauce when you start cooking. Uh, the rest is just to give you aroma and different taste and a little bit of a uh, back kick while you're having the food. So these two are the main ones and the rest is totally up to your taste. You can omit this one, you can omit this one, omit this one, add your uh, black pepper and there again, you're good to go. So, so add a little bit of a cooking oil to your pots, put it on a high heat, let it warm up and when you see like in the middle of your pot it's getting separated, that's a good indication that your oil is hot. Another way that you can find out, get a little bit of an onion, drop it in there, and if you see like that, it starts bubbling up, it means that it is to the temperature to add the onion. So, first thing first, the whole amount of onions, everything is gonna go in, All right? So we get everything in there. Give it a good mix, so make sure that oil gets everywhere to your onions. All of them got a little bit of a oil covered on the surface. And uh, just leave it there. Don't worry about it so much if it is on like a really high heat because your onion was like really uh, cold. It was with the ambient temperature and now you added it to the oil so it's not gonna burn straight away. As you can see, it's first gonna evaporate all the water inside the onion and the, inside the oil and afterwards we get to the stage of cooking when, uh, when it gets to the stage of frying then you gotta decrease the heat on your onions now that our onions are fried partially and it gets to this stage it is a good time to start adding our spices now with the spice selection that we have I'm just gonna add from every single one of them obviously eyeball in again uh, roughly about one teaspoon of everything so a little bit of a garlic powder a little bit of a cumin a little bit of a coriander seeds a little bit of a turmeric add the turmeric at the end because it's got the tendency to turn black if you are not uh, adding the next ingredient straight away. So if you add it on a last part of your spice adding, then there's less likelihood that it's gonna burn itself to death. Now that it gets to this stage, we're gonna add a little bit of more cooking oil. So a little bit more oil. And now we're gonna add our potatoes to it. So we just add the potatoes and start mixing them up. The reason that we do that, we're not gonna fry the potatoes at this point, we're just gonna make sure that the surface gets kind of crusty and we don't need to cook them all the way through as it's gotta be steam cooked later on when we add the rice. So at this stage, we're just gonna make sure that it gets slightly crusty on the surface so later on it's not gonna get mushy and uh, mix with the rice basically. So we're just gonna fry them for a bit. At this point, it's a good uh, practice to boil some water. You will need some hot water later on, not much, depending on the amount of rice that you have to cook, you need to boil some water. So just put the kettle on and uh, make sure that you got the warm water handle. Okay, so when we got the onion and the potatoes slightly fried to this stage, just scatter everything 
and make a little hole opening or whatever you want to call it in the middle get your tomato paste add it in the middle this method is for using it with the tomato paste and to start mixing again something to bear in mind about this uh, tomato puree is the more you fry it, the taste is gonna change, the, the color is also gonna get darker. So depending on your taste, just fry it up to your own standards. Uh, one thing to bear in mind though is uh, it needs to be fried because you don't want the raw tomato taste in there, you want the good tomato taste in there. Uh, it is achieved only by frying it. So fry it for a bit. When you get this sort of a consistency that it is stick to your potatoes, it is almost stick to your onions, uh, it's time to add your rice. And with the rice, this was what we had. As you can see, it's a little bit rising. We gotta get rid of the excess water and add the whole bulk to our pot. And that's it. Now, flatten everything, just like that. Then add your salt. The amount of salt though is also depends on the amount of rice that you have. So I'm just gonna eyeball it again. That's good enough. Normally they say for one and a half cups of rice you need about two teaspoons to three teaspoons depending on the taste of uh, salt. And now when it gets like this, you need to add your hot water too. So we start adding the hot water just above the rice level, right? We don't want everything to swim in there. We just want to cover it. The more water you add, the more problems you will cre create for yourself because you can make a really delicious and nice food into a catastrophic, mushy baby food. And you don't want to do that. So now that it starts to simmer like this, you gotta start mixing it. That was the reason behind it that I said don't add so much water to it because you gotta mix it like this, keep mixing it up to the point that you can just bring the rice and the ingredients into the middle and it stays there. It doesn't just rush back. This is the goal. So now we need to bring everything to the middle and uh, bring the temperature to lowest possible temperature, something like just barely any flames on the gas cookers or number two or number one on the electric cookers and uh, cover the lid with a kitchen towel. Uh, Sort of like a, basically seal the top and let it cook for another 20 to 30 minutes then it should be good to go here we go ahead and make a hole in the middle so the steam can evaporate from the middle as well uh, before we go ahead and seal everything you can see I put it on number two I wrapped the lid in a cloth and I'm gonna let it cook for another good 20 to 30 minutes and then it should be ready to serve. Uh, you don't need to do anything else at this point, you can make the side ingredients, side dishes or anything that you want to have with it. If you want, you can click in the corner over here and uh, find out how to make a real nice bread that goes with this food. Uh, yeah, that's in another video. But normally you can have this one with some side dishes like yogurt or some pickles or even some salad there you have it that is our final dish the crust at the bottom is not actually burnt it is called tariq in persian and it is something to die for it's real nice basically with little ingredients as just tomatoes rice a little bit of onion and even not actual tomato tomato puree you can make a beautiful dish like this to enjoy for yourself or with the loved ones. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the video. Let me know down below in the comments if you like the food, if you ever made something like this before. And stay tuned for more videos like this.